to the Slow Flowers Show with Deborah Prinzing. This is episode 200, excuse me, episode 521. This is the weekly show about slow flowers and the people who grow and design with them. It's all about making a conscious choice, and I invite you to join the conversation and the creative community as we discuss the vital topics of saving our domestic flower farms and supporting a floral industry that relies on a safe, seasonal, and local supply of flowers and foliage. This show is brought to you by slowflowers.com, the free online directory to more than 880 florists, shops, and studios who design with local, seasonal, and sustainable flowers, and to the farms that grow those blooms. It's the conscious choice for buying and sending flowers. And thank you to our listeners who have helped us celebrate our Slow Flowers podcast's eighth anniversary. We launched our new live stream video format, calling it the Slow Flowers Show, with the goal of sharing the faces and voices of our members, as well as tours of their farms, their shops and studios, and most of all, their flowers. I'll share our sponsored thank yous at the end of today's episode. So let's jump right in and get started. I'm learning how to juggle all the moving parts of this new video platform, which is simultaneously airing live on our Slow Flowers Facebook page and on YouTube. So I have immense gratitude for today's guest, Vanessa Van Kieran of Pops Flowers, based in Edgewood, Washington. I visited Vanessa earlier this week to record a video tour of her flower farm, which is based on a two acre parcel complete with a solid log cabin. Here's the surprise. She is literally 12 miles from my suburban home. We're both situated between Seattle and Tacoma. And visiting Pops Flowers truly feels like a trip to the countryside. What an incredible find. And you'll love seeing what Vanessa and her husband, Garrett Burns, have created in just a few seasons. After the video tour with Vanessa, You'll see another video when I sit down uh, with Vanessa to talk about her business, which she describes as in its young teenager phase. We wrap up the show with a quick peek into the CoolBot and new floral studio, which Vanessa and Garrett recently created to support their new online flower shop. So please join me in welcoming Vanessa Van Kieran to the Slow Flower Show. And first, we're going to uh, have a tour of her farm. All right, welcome to Pops, everyone. We are Pops Flowers, and our farm is located in Edgewood, Washington, Zone 8B. Can we have a tour? Sure, All you right. absolutely can. Wait, we don't say, we, we need to introduce you. Oh, my name's Vanessa. I've been here a year and a half, and I am a fifth year flower farmer. Wow, that's awesome. Okay. Yeah. Wow, how much acreage do you have here? So the total property is um, right at two acres, and we're working up to a, an eighth of an acre in production. So everywhere that you see something growing or with a silage tarp, that'll be the eighth of an acre. Wow, it's so amazing. We do live in a flight path, so I apologize uh, for the sound. I do too. Oh yeah, in Des Moines. I'm every two minutes. There's a. Fl- a jet taking off. It's really hard to uh, uh, do an interview. Maybe we'll do the other part indoors. Yeah, probably a good (laughs) idea. We've got good sound insulation in there. So you're mainly doing annuals and dahlias right now? Right now, yep. Mm -hmm. And then we have a pretty big tulip program in the spring. Wow. And where will you plant those? Uh, We actually plant them out here with low tunnels. Mm -hmm. We cover half the crop and that way it staggers it out a Mm -hmm. little bit. Wow, that's great. so was this a horse pasture or? So originally this farm and the 40 acres surrounding it belonged to one family and they did cows and chickens for years and years and years. And then of course, time goes on, things get subdivided. Um, and it was just an open pasture. I don't think there have ever been horses. Wow. Or yeah. just just a grazing pasture or just, just mown? I think it with... was just mown. It was just a residential lot. Wow. God, it's huge. Yeah, it's good size. It's crazy. It goes back to, I don't know if you can see the neighbor's power line there, but that's about where the property line is. Wow. Okay. Okay, so show us what you're growing. Of course, absolutely. So my main story right now is dahlias, and I've got about 350 to 400 plants. They're all labeled, so you can see what the varieties are. Yeah, wow. That's great. Thank you. So uh, you don't dig them up in the winter, do you? I do, actually. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm trying to get up to 600 plants. I think that's going to be our sweet spot. So it'll be important to divide this winter again. So uh, the way you have these rows aligned, do you have like 100 plants per row? That's correct. Wow. Yeah. 
and two they're staggered two they side are, by side i don't have perfect um amounts of variety so there's different varieties in each bed and i just have two rows down each bed wow yeah wow and then of course there's some cold hardy annuals that i still need to rip out but beyond <laughs> that i've got cornell bronze which has been super productive for us well let's year. go look at cornell sure. <laughs> no no apologies about the uh like <laughs> Oh, you're the chief labor uh, source here, probably, I right? I wear all the hats in our business. Wow, that is such a pretty color. Isn't it stunning? Oh my gosh. Is um, this really popular with the florist too? It actually really is. And I found, you know, the ball shapes are all the rage mm -hmm. right now. But I think a huge part of that is really because they last so long in the vase compared to the decorative or the cactus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and that's really what I have found the florists want out of a dahlia. Not just color, but vase life too. And the ones down there, uh, a la mode is pretty. Yes. They're beautiful. I've had a little trouble with them this year. I, they seem to get scorched a lot faster than I've noticed in previous years, but. That's interesting, your white ones aren't. I know, they aren't. So I don't know what it is. And um, you, you would get scorched here because it's fully exposed. I mean, it is. Yeah, the sunflowers get, are thriving. Right, we get eight to 12 hours. Those guys obviously got really huge, so we didn't cut them, but I'm letting them go to seed. I figure anywhere we can save a little money, why not? Yeah. So. You mean you let the sun, the, the flower heads get big? I did this time around, yeah. Yeah, because they don't so. seem that tall. No, they didn't get super tall. They it's... just got really big. <laughs> But I love I'll take it. it. That's more yeah. seeds, so and what I are, take it. What are your annuals that you're growing? Oh, sure. So um, down here I have amaranth. Amaranth has always been a personal favorite of mine. Mm. I love all the different varieties. This one here, this with some envy zinnias mixed in, is the coral fountain amaranth that we get from Johnny's Seed. Oh my goodness. It's the color really and fun. the shape are beautiful. Isn't it lovely? Wow. Further down I have some of the emerald tassels. It's... Um, it's been picked quite heavily, uh -huh. but you're welcome to go take a look. And in between here and there, we have lots of Benarius giant zinnias on the right, some Cosmos, and on the left, we've got the Coco Gold Marigolds, also from mm. Johnny's Seeds. Mm. All my favorites. Aren't they fun? So, wait, are these on the left, the Coco Golds? That's correct. It's a long-stemmed uh, marigold, too, isn't it? Very much so. Wow. It does have the signature scent. <laughs> Which, what, some people don't like? I actually personally enjoy, but I know some people aren't fans. Yeah, I, to me they're kind of like tomatoes. They just represent, I gotta smell this really closely, they represent summer. Yes, very much so. Hmm. And here's a, more of that terrific amaranth. Yeah, I did a little experiment on spacing. Um, I was told that if you plant amaranth very tight together, a lot of times it'll create this multi-pronged fountain versus when they're more spread out, sometimes you'll get more of a long tassel. Which is sometimes hard to design with, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's really popular for installations, but I found there's really kind of no other purpose. Um, so I did a spacing experiment here. These are quite spaced out. And then the first patch you looked at, I direct seeded and I did not thin. Wow. So that was the experiment. I found that the shapes were actually both the same in this case. So that might just be the way it is with the coral. Maybe that rule only applies to the emerald. Mm. I'm not sure. But these seem a little on. these seem a little bit tall. No, they're about the same height. Yeah. As the ones that we saw at the top of the Fairly row. Similar. Yeah. Fairly Very similar. Very cool. And then we've got pumpkins that are invading our lives. Uh, what are you going to use those for? Just personal or? Uh, we use them to decorate a little bit around mm -hmm. the farm, mm -hmm. but we do end up selling quite a few. I typically grow just the small decorative mm -hmm. ones um, and they're really popular with customers. So, That's fun. You know, people want to decorate their mantle or something. It's a yeah. little, little upsell when they visit the farm stand. Before we wrap up, I have to look at that pretty one over there. Sure, by all means. Can I hop the You're row? You're more than welcome to hop. All right, what is this? That's black satin. Oh. And we it's almost hard to capture on a camera, isn't it? It it's is. So like you really need the light to catch the just the nuance of that. It's really dark. Pretty. Uh, probably darker than it appears on camera. Yeah. In my experience. Yeah. I mean, look at the the tiny one. Yes. So you have kind of decided to have a spectrum of light to dark and mostly balls, but some decoratives and I guess cafe au lait too, right? Correct. Correct. Cafe, because she's just so popular. 
Yep. I try to stick to mostly balls again because of the vase life, mm -hmm. but I can't resist a good decorative or a cactus <laughs> now and again. Yeah, here's Marne. Correct. So pretty. That color is just stunning. It's so unique. It's such a unique, cool, but bright orange. You're right. And then Mystique, this is pretty too. This is like a nice saturated color, but not pastel and not primary. Agreed. Yeah. And then uh, I want to look at this one that we were, is this the one you were talking about was kind of getting scalded? Uh, the one I was referencing was a la mode and oh. that is peaches and cream. Oh, peaches and cream looks nice. Right. A little bit of thrip damage, but not too yeah. bad. Wow. Oh, a la mode's over there. Correct. Yeah. Well, let's go look at it just so people are going, what? I didn't see a la mode. <laughs> it is a stunning dahlia. But it's just, just not doing everything that you want it to do. This year, no. Yeah. That's pretty. I would God, probably the stick to the and cream myself for production and leave a la mode for the, the personal garden look at or the, the land. Look at the diversity of that petal though. That's all, like, that's one flower that's like almost color blocked in its petals. And then that's the other one, right? Correct. Wow. Cool. All right. Anything else? No, I just thank you so much for visiting and everyone for watching. <laughs> it's really a pleasure to have everyone out in our Dahlia, our Dahlia garden and our our field. Yeah, and we'll sit down and do the rest of the interview after this, okay? Sounds great. Hey everybody, I'm so excited today to be here uh, with my neighbor, Vanessa Van Kieran of Pops Flowers. We don't live that far from each other. No, not too far. Thanks for letting me come visit you today. It's my pleasure. That's great. It's great to know that there are beautiful, organic, sustainable flowers growing right in the city. I mean, yeah. you're right off the freeway, basically. We are, and then we're only 30 seconds off of the main road, uh, Meridian up there. Yeah. So yeah really convenient well we uh, are gonna sh you'll have just seen a video tour that Vanessa led me on to see her growing area and I don't know how good the audio is but I think it'll be a great introduction of what she's growing here and now we're gonna talk about just the whole pops flower story mm -hmm. so uh, Vanessa give us a snapshot of pops flowers um, you've got a lot of facets and a lot of moving parts yep how do you wrap your arms around all of that um, it's a struggle, <laughs> but I'm getting better every year. So the farm itself is a two acre piece of land, but we've got almost an eighth of an acre in production. We do um, tulips in the spring, we do uh, cold hardy annuals, and then we also do our summer annuals. So that's what we're growing. And then as far as income streams go, or flower outlets, mm -hmm. however you want to put it, we have our CSA, we have an online store where we do everyday flower orders. Um, I do the occasional custom order if there's a local that wants, you know, something for a small bridal party mm -hmm. or something like mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. and like, those, like the personal flowers or something. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And those are like our really big ones, the CSA and the online store. Mm -hmm. So you, um, you really blew me away with just like all the ways that you're finding customers and customers mm -hmm. are finding you because you said that most of it's through Instagram. A lot so, of it. How, how would you describe Pops Flowers, or do you have a tagline or something like that? Um, I say that we are always um, local and American grown. Mm -hmm. That really is the tagline that we pushed this year. I think it really encompasses our core, core value. And it really resonates with our customers. It makes us a little easier to find for those people that that's what they're looking for. And local, uh, do people know, like you're, you're technically in a town called Edgewood, right? Correct. Okay, so do you use that on your marketing? and? Edgewood grown. Edgewood grown? So oh, I guess I do, you do. <laughs> I do specify when certain things are Edgewood mm -hmm. grown, like this weekend, um, we opened up our farm stand, which is a smaller revenue stream that we have compared to the others. But yeah, this week everything was Edgewood grown and Des Moines grown. We actually got some flowers from our friend Martha up at the flower barn. I'm not sure if you've heard of her or been by her place. But is she beautiful. off of 16th? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I've yeah. seen the sandwich boards. I had a conversation with someone else about this recently. Like, I've got to find this. Who this is? Yeah. Well, because it's also in a residential area, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's so cool. So uh, you said that you've been, this is your fifth season growing, but you're only your second season here. So right. piece all those piece, puzzles, pieces yeah, together totally. for us. Yeah, totally. So uh, 
technically this is the end of my fourth and since we're kind of planning 2022 I'm leaning towards saying fifth because that's where my brain is half the time right right now (laughs) but I started growing in my grandfather's garden he lives in Milton he moved here just after the war with my grandmother they had four kids very idyllic very adorable and this is like within a few minutes from here exactly okay I'd say five minutes at the most uh and he was always a gardener and a homesteader, but he got to be about 92 or so, 90, 92, and realized that he just couldn't do it anymore. Um, At the time, I was living in Tacoma in a small condo. I had a couple raised beds in the front of my my condo, but it really wasn't much. So when he said, I can't do it anymore, I said, Grandpa, I'll, I'll do your garden for you. Wow. Yeah, and he, his wife, my grandmother, had passed away maybe five years before, and he always kept fresh flowers in the house for her. Mm. He still does mm. to this day. Mm. So initially, when he first gave me his garden, I thought, well, let's grow some dahlias for Pop. You know? And he's Pop. Exactly. That's, That's who Pop is. You made the business after him. We did. And it was actually my husband's idea, and I have to, I'll forever be indebted to him for thinking of it. That's so sweet. Isn't it sweet? Yeah. yeah so, And we still bring flowers every week for Grandma. So, mm. yeah, that's how we got started. Mm. And then we found this place a year and a half ago. Um, And it just kind of ticked all our boxes. So here we are. Well, those of you who saw the video will maybe have caught a glimpse of this amazing house in the Mm -hmm. backdrop. It's basically a modern day log cabin, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was built in 99 and it's a traditional log cabin home built the old fashioned way. Really? And what do you mean by that? Like the joinery and the... Um, Just that the logs were, it's a long process, Mm -hmm. I guess is what I'm saying. There's no expedited technology way of making this go faster. These are full logs. Correct. Nothing like fabricated or no wow. yeah that, and that's what I was implying yeah so you you mentioned earlier that you grew up in a log cabin so you kind of have an affection for these yeah. houses that not everybody sees as um convenient or you yeah know, well, it's, for def- them. it's definitely not convenient <laughs> <laughs> it's it is a little bit of a lifestyle but yeah I grew up in one so um and then I sort of floundered around a little bit in my 20s fluttering here and there and moving quite a lot so when I was feeling ready to settle and I found a piece of land that was going to accommodate the farm and it had a house that brought back all this nostalgia and all these childhood memories it was just I had to do it I love it I love it and and that's what I was marveling about with having two acres in basically in a sea of subdivisions Mm -hmm. I mean it's very much like where I live and so a lot of new developments a lot of probably I don't know maybe it was farmland that got flipped into you know residential neighborhoods but you've protected this land now Mm -hmm. and you have a lot of room to grow we do have a lot of room to grow and protecting the land you know was important to me there's an 18 acre parcel just out the window behind the camera um, that was all field and woods but it was recently cleared to build a city park which mm. is great green least, spaces yeah. for the community but at the same time preserving some wildlife habitat when all of this density is coming in to me is important yeah so I'm excited to preserve this little parcel for as long as I can I love it. So Pops Flowers has a lot of facets, as you started to say. Mm-hmm. Let's break those down a little bit. Sure. Um, your, it sounds like your first thing you really launched was the CSA. Is that correct? It was. Yeah, that was the first real serious revenue stream that I launched, for sure. Um, and it's it's worked really, really well. I've really enjoyed it. We started it with the idea of we'll bring the farmer's market to you, which during the time of COVID was even more popular. So. Um, wow. That was really lovely. Wow. So you have you have multiple types of shares and frequencies that people can uh, invest in. And talk a little bit about those, those sure. s- buckets of product, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, we do our CSA for our main season, which is our, our summer season and into fall. Uh, we haven't done a spring CSA yet, but I think that might be on the horizon. Especially since you're going to plant all those bulbs, right? Yes, yeah. exactly. But so we'll talk about summer. We do a 12-week summer season, and we break our CSAs down into kind of three lengths. So we've got a full season, which is 12 weeks, a half season, which is six weeks, but every other. Mm -hmm. And then we break it into um, three other chunks, three four-week chunks. So we've got a mid-summer, a late summer, and an early fall. So that way people have different price points and also different frequencies to accommodate for travel and things like that. 
Do people often gift the four-week uh, CSA? Because that seems like it would be a perfect length of they time. They do. It's yeah. a, that is the most common way that we sell that four-week one. We usually put them on sale for Valentine's Day, so that's very popular. And then all of the CSAs for every year are always available by Mother's Day at the latest. So we sell a lot then, too. Oh, so you can see the whole, the whole calendar of the rest of the year mm-hmm. if you want to do that. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how you charge? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So... This year, we realized that we definitely need to raise our prices a bit. I think pricing and learning the value of our labor and and that the value of the flowers that we're growing because they are local, because they're specialty, because they can't be shipped, that's something that took us some time to learn. Mm-hmm. So we do have to raise our prices, but we have um, you know bouquet recipes, and it's really it's a formula, yeah. you know. So that's that's how we sort of mm-hmm. sort it out. So. You're going to be spending anywhere from 120 upwards to maybe $400, depending on which subscription it is that you're yeah. interested in. Yeah. But you're delivering these bouquets, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's a, that's a value add right there. You're oh, big time. Not requiring people to go to a central place even here to pick them up. Right. Maybe that'll change if you grow to the point where you have to have a, like a North County... Yeah. South County kind of pickup location. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's something we've discussed. I think that's the most interesting thing about going from a small garden to a large farm is I joke with my husband about how I feel like our business is about 14 years old. We're just kind of gangly and uncomfortable in our body a little <laughs> You're bit. You're the teenager. But we're figuring it out. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that seems like it's kind of plug and play. Like you've got the CSA thing mm. really well organized and your customers are trained. Yes. They understand that. And then um, beyond that, you said that you also have some florists who come and shop from you, mm-hmm. but your uh, your capacity, you're not at your full capacity yet, right? Exactly. Production-wise, I still have a lot of room to grow, quite literally. Mm-hmm. Um, so I do accommodate florist orders here and there, usually about two or three a week right now in the summer. And are they, I mean, I, I can't imagine mm-hmm. what they're asking for. Maybe they're just saying, we love your flowers, give us the best of what you have. Or are they being really specific about palette or variety? No, I have found that a lot of the um, florists that come and shop with us are new to the game. So they're not as married to traditional wholesale buying as maybe some older florists would be. Um, They're willing to come to the farm and pick up. So it's been a really great relationship so far. And what typically happens is they say, well, I'm doing a wedding and I need whites and greens Mm -hmm. or I'm doing a bridal shower and I need cream and pink Mm -hmm. or what have you and because we're small still Mm -hmm. I'm able to pull everything out of the cooler that fits in their color palette and then I let them come and shop not buy the stem they're buying wholesale bunches but I let them pick their stems but you kind of curated the palette for them exactly they can decide um, from that bucket mm-hmm. yeah what they want well it's usually a lot of buckets but yeah yeah, yeah. and is it um, what happens with foliage are, are you growing anything for foliage right now my summer foliage game is not as strong as I would like it to be I in fact my husband and I were talking about um, you know little things that we want to work on over the winter and figure out we were just talking about this we usually do a reflection like every mm-hmm. quarter and that's on the list mm-hmm. so that's what I have to figure out but my spring foliage I really I, I do okay with yeah so. and I could see where a lot of things depending on stage of harvest mm-hmm. there's great foliage on the on the stem mm-hmm. of the annual or whatever sure you know? so you're kind of building or you have things like your amaranth that can be a flower or a foliage exactly and if I I'll be very honest if I am light on filler that week those leaves stay on that amaranth yeah. absolutely yeah you said also that you do buy from other growers as well so I that do. kind of fills in what you're would be what you don't have available exactly and I started that in year two when I was again at my grandfather's garden it was a small space and I'm not gonna say we blew up or we went viral but we had more customers than I could accommodate with the quantity that I could grow in his space so that's when we started going to the Seattle wholesale growers market Mm -hmm. which the blessing as you and I discussed off-camera earlier yeah um, and that's kind of where that started and since then I've been able to build relationships with other local farmers, so I go to the market when I need to, but I can also call Martha at the Flower Barn or my friend Haley in Olympia or loads of people around here. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. It's just such a dramatic change from even five years ago when mm-hmm. it, this, you know, we're what, about 15 to 16 miles south of the Seattle Wholesale Growers Market, right. so it's not like 
just in your backyard. You have to be intentional about it. Right. Um, it if you can't get up there, you have other options. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so great. great. It's a network. So the e-commerce thing really imp impresses me, that you built this um, ordering system on your website, and, and you're showing people types of arrangements, but they're not ordering specific arrangements. So Correct. what do you call those, and how do you, how, do you, um, how do you break those out? So basically, we have our bouquets on there in two different sizes, or we will, we're launching this literally a week from today. Oh, great. Because we okay. did hire a designer to come in and do this for us, and I'm really excited about okay. it. Okay, we'll, we'll anticipate this. Exactly. So we'll have our two bouquet sizes on there, and then we'll have probably four or six different sizes of arrangements. And basically, we will photograph them throughout the year to give people an idea of what that size arrangement or bouquet would look mm. like in different months throughout mm -hmm. the year. So mm -hmm. that's how we're going to do it. And we're going to let them know that um, pretty much every design is designer's choice, working with what's seasonally available. And that's the magic of it. Yeah, so I love that. That's how we're going to do it. Um, the way you described it to me when we were having lunch was really neat. You said it's for people who want the florist experience but don't want to have, you know, the unpredictability of, you know, not knowing who's actually grown these flowers. And they might know what the picture on the wire service yeah. looks like, but that's not necessarily what the bouquet is either. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And if you're not going to know what it's going to be, it might as well be local and seasonal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's so great. So you um, built your own website. Mm -hmm. And is it like something that you are seeing people use like on on the desktop or mobile or both or I think mostly desktop um, I need to optimize it for mobile better that's again something on my my your, quarterly list your winter to do list. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. exactly so I think desktop for but now. I guess you figure out how your customers want to interact with you too mm -hmm. because you're still I would imagine accessible enough that they could call or text if they needed to absolutely we have a farm phone number um, and people call and text whenever they need anything mm. And we also have automatic text message reminders for our subscribers, and we um, we have a newsletter when I make time to get to it, <laughs> which I know is something other farmer or flower farmers struggle yeah. with, so I don't feel too bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we try to stay really connected on social media and email and texts and all of it. I mean, your whole brand is so beautiful and engaging, and it's really your personality. And I I don't really I, you have to tell us your your path because you did allude to the fact that you have built websites for your much of your adult life so right. obviously you have the right skill set for that but tell me about your path to flowers from a, a little girl whose grandfather grew flowers oh thank yeah. you yeah um i think flowers were always there for me um when i was young i inherited a home from a family mother member who passed away and all of a sudden I didn't need all the things that most people needed so I'd have a birthday and people would say what kind of you know what can I get you and I'd say oh just buy me flowers and the house would be full of flowers for a week um, and then when I got into my 20s I was living in Tacoma and I had the ritual of going to the market and getting flowers every week I was single and it was like my thing that I did for myself I developed a relationship with a local florist someone I could just go to and say hey it's my mom's birthday or what have you so I had a flower practice they were always there in the background but what I was actually doing in my teens and 20s was building a lot of individual skills for entrepreneurship and, and a lot of creative things. So like photography, website design, I think it's sort of a, a millennial thing to do to be self-taught in all these different right. interests that you have. Right. I mean, this so. is amazing that you're using all these skills that you maybe thought, oh, I'll support myself being a photographer or I'll support myself mm -hmm. building websites, but basically you're supporting Pops Flowers with those skills now. Exactly. Yeah. They've all come together into one thing, and it feels really nice. Isn't it funny that you talked about being a millennial and that you want to be self-taught? I mean, do you think that that's why YouTube has blown up so much? Mm. It's like everybody can learn everything on YouTube? Absolutely, and I think millennials realized it a little bit before older generations, um, and they just kind of grabbed the ball and ran with it. And then, of course, now Gen Z, they they took the ball somewhere and millennials are lost. But yeah, you, yeah, you know what it's I mean. It's all right. I'm, I'm, a, I'm the youngest age of baby boomer, so I okay. Know, you know what I mean. I I feel left in the dust already by you. Yeah. Um, but this idea of YouTube you mentioned as well is something that you're trying to build up because mm -hmm. because you just are aware of how people learn and can consume information. 
Right, absolutely. And and I see a lot of hunger for it, especially after the last year. And this is probably a topic you're tired of speaking of, but the last year has created such a hunger and yeah. so many new gardeners. People want that self-sufficiency and they want to be able to bring beauty into their lives without having to rely on flowers getting shipped into their grocery store. So I, I, I'm not saying I want to necessarily make a bunch of money off of that, but it's something where we want to be able to share our journey and teach along the way. Mm -hmm. So is your husband doing the YouTube with you as well? Or, uh, he helps he a little bit camera? here and there, <laughs> but mostly I shoot on my phone. He, um, he helped me find this really wonderful system called Moment, and they create lenses that you can screw onto your phone. So we've been using that to shoot some of our videos, really? which has been really nice because so, it's so mobile. So what does that allow you to do? You t turn your phone into like a, just a better, better filming camera or right so I spent my whole life shooting on DSLR cameras and they're big and they're clunky they work wonderful mm -hmm. but this allows me some of that professional level quality video without the cumbersomeness of the setup wow yeah and not to get all nitty-gritty but I yeah. want to know like are you using a, a selfie stick or how are you doing how are you filming yourself yeah so right now I just hold it with my arm but my husband's not super happy about that <laughs> because we invested in what's called a movi and it's it's basically a gimbal yes um so yes it's it's there and I need to use it. But could you film yourself using I the Moby? Okay. I could, yeah. 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 It's just you're 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 wearing so many hats. It's hard to stop long enough and create the systems. I mean, as we were talking about with this video format I'm trying to do like Yeah. You know, yes, it would be great to have a crew, it'd be great to have mm -hmm. someone doing hair and makeup, it'd be great to have someone doing lighting, but that all becomes cost prohibitive. And yeah. if you can just hold your phone and talk about a crop why not it's yeah just, people feel like you're authentic exactly that and it's efficient mm -hmm. and then time is really the resource I have the least of so we try so, to be mindful so do you have the YouTube button on your website yes okay so people can come watch you yeah, and subscribe. absolutely oh I love it that's mm -hmm. great um, well I just love that I got to come visit you and all that you're doing before we go I want to talk about your newest piece of news which is mm -hmm. your studio Yes. And maybe we'll quickly go get a little bit of footage about that. I'd love that too. Okay, so tell me what, how'd this all come about? Well, um, I have noticed that what I love to do is grow flowers. And what people want is to be able to click and buy flowers. <laughs> so I want to spend more time in my field and people want to click and buy. So we did make the decision this year to bring on an in house designer which is gonna enable us to launch our web store in a week with all those products we just talked about. So you're, you're, you're willing to see what the marketplace wants and accommodate, but you're not trying to become a designer yourself. Exactly, okay. design is just not where my heart is. And I'll be real honest, when, when we went to the Slow Flower Summit, that day one with the flower takeover, that was my big glaring lesson. I was like, I am a farmer and a gardener and design is not my calling. Okay, but did you work in one of the rooms at the I summit? I didn't, I, I snuck away and I took my camera and I got B-roll of all of the gardens to share with my YouTube friends. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I'm glad you know what your strength is. Absolutely. Yeah. I have, and I have kind of a passion for like 17th century English gardens. So to see, to see Philoli was just amazing. But oh, anyway, that's great. we got okay. sidetracked. I outed you now. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. So you've got this young, this new designer working for you. Mm -hmm. you you created a studio then for you can do your production. Exactly. I wanted to have a space that was accommodating and safe and comfortable for her because I usually just work outside in the beautiful outdoors. But, right. But sometimes um, the weather's not going to be accommodating. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So it was important to create a space for her. Of course, with COVID, all the lumber prices are crazy, and I needed to do something quickly. So we ended up converting a shed, a garden shed, into a little studio space. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then where is your cooler? Oh, it's hiding in the back amongst the weeds okay. next to the, the new studio. Oh, okay. So you have all the pieces. I do. And you even are set up for on-farm sales. Mm -hmm. When I pulled in, there was a, a a flower table with an umbrella, and I can't remember what the sign said, probably. It said closed. Closed. <laughs> <laughs> but you 
Well, you just kind of do that uh, spontaneously, like a pop-up sale? Or? I do pop-ups for holidays, yep. And then we're usually open as a as a farm stand every Saturday. We usually open around 9 and go till either it's too hot or we sell out. Really? Yeah. And that's you post about that on, on Instagram or does just the neighbors know about it? Um, Facebook. Facebook oh. has been huge for us. Uh, when we first started, that's kind of where I started my business was on Facebook. Um, neighborhood groups have been really, really, really vital and totally long us and I, I love those people they're my day oneers so we still promote that way your day oneers yeah <laughs> your plank holders exactly. your, your core first customers I love mm-hmm. it well what did I not ask you that you want to share before we wrap up and go look at your studio um not much that I can think of I know in future we do plan on adding um perennials and we want to put in just a a tunnel for um, propagation. That's probably our last big piece of infrastructure, but um, that's it. Wow. No, uh, you have so much capacity here. You're going to do so. I mean, I'm sure it's only a matter of time before people ask you to come do workshops and, you know, have a farm dinner and like you could do it all. I would love to. Yeah. I would love to. Yeah. You did say that you are consulting with beginning farmers though. So that's kind of a cool emerging uh, opportunity as well. It's been amazing. We have a lot of followers on Instagram that are first, second, or third year farmer florists or maybe just gardeners with a cutting garden, um, and they just kind of want that hands-on personal direction, you know, and maybe a workshop isn't feasible for them from a price point range or, again, they just want that personal mm-hmm. connection. So yeah, we've been consulting on both um, farming production and uh, the business side too. And is it mostly in person, or w- was today just an anomaly and normally you do it on Zoom? Oh, no. Um, I like to go to the person's space. That's that's my preference. Yeah. I want to give them the opportunity to see their space through an experienced set of eyes. So that's what we do. That's so great. Yeah. I love it. Vanessa, thank you so much. This has been really great. And oh. I, I feel like I want to be part of your neighborhood group now, too. Oh, well, you're welcome. Okay. <laughs> Um, be, we'll just wrap up here and then we'll go out and just get a yeah. little bit of footage of, of the studio. Yeah, it's freshly painted and, and ready to be set up completely. I'm excited to show you the bones though. Thanks so much. Okay, thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, the, goodies. The light is just to the left there. Oh. The pitch is just there. Oh, good. Perfect. Oh, it's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. And lots of room. And yes. here we go. Pops flowers, forty dollars. <laughs> so, are these going out, or are these for? These uh, are leftover from the farm stand. Mm-hmm. So we clean out the cooler every Tuesday morning. So some will get composted, some will get um, gifted to friends and family, mm-hmm. and some will end up in the farmhouse. I love it. Okay, now you're going to show me your studio. Yeah, absolutely. So this is our little shed that we made over. I love your little um, ode to gardening tools here. <laughs> Thank you. Such a cute way to store them. Well, we used to have everything in the shed, but now that we're repurposing... I mean, how nice is it that you have this structure? Oh yeah, it's a blessing, especially with the cost of construction materials right now. You were saying that. So, so you obviously, obviously decided to be efficient and work with what you have. Exactly. Okay, give us so, the big reveal, Vanessa. All right. Oh Here my goodness, go. how cute is this? Oh, beautiful. It's going to be your little workspace. Exactly. Oh my gosh. A little blank slate to design in. And your vases. And when, so, when is this going to become activated? When you have, with this new employee? In, in about a week. Wow. Yeah. That's so, so great. She's coming in for training on Wednesday and we'll finish setting up by the following week. Okay, so, so. people who are seeing this now will next next we'll see flower a studio filled with flowers that you'll yeah. have up on your Instagram page. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> great. And I love it you can sit here and work and look right out at the beautiful oh. fields. It's kind of bright here so you're not getting all of it, but you get the idea. There we go. That was so much fun. Thank you so much for joining us today and and joining Vanessa Van Curen of Pops Flowers uh, as she hosted us for a couple tours and a great conversation. 
I'll share the audio of today's uh, conversation as a podcast episode next week, and you'll be able to find lots of photos and social media links, including links to Vanessa's YouTube channel in next week's show notes at deborahprinzing.com for episode 521. Before we wrap up, I do have some sponsor thanks, and I want to thank our lead sponsor for 2021, Farm Grow Flowers. Farm Grow Flowers delivers iconic burlap wrap bouquets and lush abundant arrangements to customers across the U.S. supporting more than 20 U.S. flower farms by purchasing more than nine million dollars of U.S. grown fresh and seasonal flowers each year and you can discover more at farmrowflowers.com. Our, first, our next sponsor thanks goes to flowerfarm.com. Flower Farm is a leading wholesale flower distributor that sources from carefully selected farms to offer high performing fresh flowers sent directly from the farm straight to you. You can shop by flower and by country of origin at flowerfarm.com. There you'll find flowers and foliage from California, Florida, Oregon, and Washington by using the origins section selection tool in your search. Check it out at flowerfarm.com. Thank you to the Association of Specialty Cut Flower Growers. Formed in 1988, ASCFG was created to educate, unite, and support commercial cut flower growers. Its mission is to help growers produce high quality floral material and to foster and promote the local availability of that product. Learn more at ASCFG.com. And a final thank you to Red Twig Farms. Based in Johnstown, Ohio, Red Twig Farms is a family-owned farm specializing in peonies, daffodils, tulips, and branches. A popular peony bouquet by mail program and their Spread the Hope campaign where customers purchase for essential workers and others in their community. Learn more at redtwigfarms.com. Thanks so much for joining us today. As our movement gains more supporters and more passionate participants who believe in the importance of our domestic cut flower industry, the momentum is contagious and I know you feel it too. I value your support and invite you to show your thanks to support Slow Flower's ongoing advocacy, education, and outreach activities. You can find the donate button in the column to the right at deborahprinzing.com. I'm Deborah Prinzing, host and producer of The Slow Flowers Show. Next week, you're invited to join me in putting more slow flowers on the table, one stem, one vase at a time. The content and opinions expressed here are either mine alone or those of my guests alone, independent of any podcast sponsor or other person, company, or organization. Our The Slow Flowers podcast is engineered and edited by Andrew Brenlin. Thank you so much to Andrew for helping me set up our new video podcast platform, which you're seeing today, and for teaching me the technology. I'll be relying more on his talents in the coming days. You can learn more about Andrew and his work at soundbodymovement.com. And I'll see you next week.